So welcome to our team call tonight. My name is Brigitte Limford, and um, if you're on this call, you're either within my downline or you're within Scotty's downline, and we're all together. We're actually all one happy family here. Uh, Scotty Hobbs is my sponsor. He's the one who inspired me to do this business. He's the one who taught me everything that I know, who helped me build a business that you know has been able to help me and my family and change my life. So. I had this idea that it would be cool to team up for an interview and and just put him on the spot, ask him some questions. And so I do have some questions already written down from a few of um, members of the team and then also a few that I, I, I just thought would be helpful and beneficial. But go ahead and feel free to use our little chat bar. I will be looking over there and paying attention to that. So if you are listening to a question, it kind of reminds you of another one, you can write it down and, and hopefully we'll have time to, to address that. But Scotty, first, I would love to have you take a moment and introduce yourself, share a little bit about your story and let people know who you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here first, first of all. Uh, you guys have an amazing leader in Brigida. She says she learned everything she knows from me. That's not true. Maybe in the first year, but she, I learned a lot from her as well. And I look up to Brigida and her leadership style and try to emulate a lot of what I see as well. Um, and, and I'll just start that off with, with saying, uh, as I just let you know who I am just a little bit before we take these questions. Like I've never really been a people person. Like I get, a, I, I get along with people. I never had like a group of best friends in high school or a part of the popular crowd. Like I was just friends kind of with everybody, like every group, but I didn't really fit into one specific group. Uh, so I really uh, like, as I, as I, as you may listen to some of the things I shared today, like it's been nine and a half years of learning and growing. And uh, I always like to tell my coaches, like you're a coach right now and your job is to change your own life with these products and then share with other people and invite them on the journey and give them tools so they can see results as well. And I always tell my coaches, like, I'm probably that person that lives in your neighborhood or your block that you're like, man, I should, I probably shouldn't invite that per Like you haven't invited that person that's me 10 years ago because I worked like 12 hour days. Um, I didn't say, I didn't talk to any neighbors. Like I, I didn't talk to anyone in my neighborhood. I would leave before five in the morning, get home at five, the garage door would come up. My neighbors would see me drive, drive into cul-de-sac, go in the garage, and the door would shut, and no one ever saw me. So you probably have someone like that in your neighborhood right now that's just like you're, you haven't invited them to be a part of your challenge group or to be a part of your team. Uh, but that all first starts with just becoming their friend first. And that's how my P90X journey started. And I don't really usually tell my story like this, but I am LDS, similar to Brigida. And my wife and I were inactive in the church. And this guy uh, knocked on my door and he was just jacked. Like his veins were popping out. His bicep was sticking out through his shirt. And I was just like, he knocked on my door and he had this plate of brownies and I let him in because, because he had brownies. And we started having this conversation. Gabby was gone at work and I had my two little girls with me. And he was, uh, it turned out he was what's called a ward mission leader. His job was to try to help reactivate members of the church. Um, and so he was just getting to know me. And through that conversation, um, I just remember asking him like, dude, like, how come you have so much energy and you look like that? And I have no energy and I look like this because I was about 30, 40 pounds overweight and had never worked out before. And I was like, in my head, I'm like trying to do the, the, the math. I'm like, you got two little girls. I got two little girls. You look like that. I look like this. Like, what are you doing? And so he ended up telling me he played uh, football for in Utah for the college football, but he was now the strength training coach at IF high school. That's, he got a job here. He just moved from Utah. And I was like, Ooh, strength training. That's why you look like that. And I was, and he's like, you want to come work out with us? And I was like, heck yes, I do. And so he invited me to come work out with him and the high school football players, but they worked out at six in the morning and I had to be to work at five. So unfortunately I couldn't go. And he's just like, He's, I was like, what can I, what can I do like at home? Is there anything, any advice you could give me? And he gave me two pieces of advice. He said, do that P90X home workout and do the push diet. And I'm like, what's the push, push diet? And he's like, push bad, push bad food away 
from the plate and don't eat it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of simple. I'll, I'll follow that. But anyhow, I printed out the P90X um, meal plan, the nutrition guide, and I committed to P90X. And in everything I've done in my life, I, when I do something, I, when I really decide to do something, I go all in with it. So I did P90X, followed the meal plan, and in 90 days, I had my before-after picture. Uh, I lost 38 pounds, and I had, like, abs for the first time in my life. And I'm like, oh, well, I had abs when I was, like, eight, but you know what I mean. In my adult life, it was the first time. And I just remember feeling so amazing, and I had this extra energy, and I started doing weird things like running on my lunch break during a 12-hour work day. Like, I just had all this energy, and I was getting out and being more active, and everybody started asking, I just, I remember like it was yesterday, people, I'd go to like a Christmas party and everybody would be like, dude, have you seen Scotty's before and after picture? And they would like pull out the phone and they would show my before after picture and people would be like, what, what are you doing? Like, you got to tell me what to do. And I was just like, you got to do P90X. You got to do insanity. And so that's how my coaching journey started before I ever became a coach. Uh, um, I wasn't a coach. I didn't even know what coaching meant. And like some of you guys, maybe I had friends on Facebook that were getting, that didn't enjoy all of my fitness posts because I never used Facebook before. And then all of a sudden it's like, I ran this many miles today. I did ab ripper X today. And, and people that don't know what fitness, anything about P90X or fitness aren't going to be interested in that. So uh, it wasn't anybody telling me this, but I was like, man, I just want to do, I want to inspire people like that, but not annoy people at the same time. So I created a Facebook group and we called it the Staying Fit Family. And I see one person here that might have been there from back in that day. But we started a, a, a group called the Staying Fit Family. It was Jennifer Greenberg and I. And I had met her through a P90X like page and through our blogs. And we just started helping people. Like people would say, what do, you, what do I do to get fit? What should I do? And we just say, go do P90X, go get insanity. And we started growing that group. We had over like a hundred, probably a hundred plus people when I became a coach. But here's the part that I really want to emphasize before we do questions. I uh, took those before after pictures and I put them, I wanted to inspire people. I, like as, as my friends started doing that, I was like, man, I want to inspire people on a bigger level. And so I put them in the P90X like page. And it was like a, a shark tank of Beachbody coaches that sent me private messages. And I know there were scripts because there was like 10 of them that were identical, like word for word, copy and pasted scripts about uh, doing a three-way call with their upline. And I was like, this is gross. Like, what is this thing? I was like, I, I hate beach body coaching. I hate beach body coaches. Uh, I'm never going to be one. And it's funny, like that next day I got on Facebook and I wrote a post like, if any of these beach body coaches could actually convince me to be a coach, I would destroy it. That's the word I use. I don't really talk like that anymore. But that was back from my playing Call of Duty every day uh, lingo language. So um, my, my message about that is I didn't want to be a part of something where um, it was just like a copy and paste script, no relationship, um, weird messaging, complete strangers type of thing. And I didn't know what that thing was yet. Uh, but I did know that I loved uh, P90X and I loved helping people with the program. So I continued helping people and, but I was curious because uh, I didn't work 12 hour days at the steel factory here in Idaho Falls because I loved working 12 hour days in a steel factory with coveralls covered in metal shavings. I didn't do that for 12 hours a day because I loved it. I did it because uh, we couldn't pay our mortgage and our bills with me working just eight hours a day. I had to work the overtime. And fortunately, at that time, my, my boss was my priest quorum leader, my youth leader in church. And, you know, he told me, he's like, you're a hard worker. Like, we have all the work in the world. Like, you can work as many hours as you want, as long as you're getting stuff done. So I worked 12 hour days. And I worked every single Saturday. And my wife, Gabby, some of you guys might know her, but she worked uh, from 3 p.m. until 11 p.m. So I'd go to work at five in the morning. I would get off at five pick up the kids from the neighbor's house because she would drop them off at three on her way to work. And then she would get home at 1130. And so when I began my coaching journey, uh, I love to talk about excuses because like I literally had what most people say no time because every day was 12, was five to five when I got home. And when I signed up as a coach, I'll, I'll tell you that story real briefly. When I signed up as a coach, my daughters were two, four and about 18 days old when I became a coach. And I was taking care of them by myself after a 12 hour work shift. 
And so when I decided to make, build a beach body business, it was five to five at work, the kids 5.30 to 8.30 by myself till I put them in bed, and then 8.30 to midnight, seven days a week working on my, on my beach body business. So when people tell me they don't have any time, I'm like, dude, you got, you got time. You just have to find it. Uh, and you have to really know what it is that you want out of this business so that you make the sacrifices for that. And we're not going to talk all about the sacrifice unless someone asks, asks a question about that later. But the moment for me, because I, I spent eight months not being a coach when I knew about the opportunity, I was invited. And, and I want you guys to really think about this because you're inviting people from time to time and they're like, no, or they ghost you or they don't say anything. Well, I, I loved P90X. I loved helping people with P90X. And I had great results from P90X, but I still said no for eight months, eight months straight. Lindsay, every month would, Lindsay that way was my coach. And by the way, she, she didn't script me. I actually watched her YouTube video and I was like, okay, I could tell my story like she, like she told her story and I could attract and find the people that, that I want to help. And so I, I emailed her and we had our first conversation and, and all of that, but she followed up with me every month and she's like, Scotty, you're doing exactly what I'm doing. You're just not getting paid for it. And there was a, a promotion month how we have like promo codes now and all that stuff where you could sign up as a coach and get the $40. We didn't have challenge packs back then. You could pay that. You could waive the $40 sign up fee and become a coach for $0. And she's like, Scotty, now's the chance. And she even told me, she's like, you don't even have to get shake. She knew my budget and how tight we were. She's like, you don't even have to get Shakeology right now. Let's just get you signed up for $0. You can work, help a few people, take that money and then invest in your own Shakeology. And I'm like, nope, not going to do it. Like not for me yet. And so I kept saying, no, 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 uh, over and over. And Kimberly is saying it took her nine months and like, Kimberly, now I see her at the top of the team in success code points every single month. So you got to be patient with those people that are, are saying no. But for me, that, that shifted on April 11th, 2011. And that was uh, about 18 days after the birth of my third daughter, Ellie. I remember getting to work. I had this habit of picking up the mail from the mailbox every single morning. It's in a lock box at the end of our cul-de-sac. I would pick it up. I would go to work because I told you what our schedule's like. And I would get to work like a little early. I'd open the mail, throw all the junk mail away, take the bills, and I would do my little spreadsheet of bills and write the check at work before I started. And so that, that morning, it had like the hospital bill, my Blue Cross statement with everything that we were going to owe and what the, what the insurance paid. And it came to over like over $3,500 that we were going to owe. And we're already paycheck to paycheck. And I remember sitting, I was sitting in a chair like this, one of these swivel office chairs in my cubicle. And I felt like my cubicle just started to spin around. Like I felt like I had this heavy weight on my shoulders and I was scared. I was, I was scared. Like, do I have to go back to like, what am I going to do? Like, do I have to go back to school? Cause I'm a college dropout by the way. I'm like, do I have to go back to school? Does Gabby have to get a higher paying day job during the day? And we have to put our kids in, in daycare or do I have to get a second full-time job? Like, get out of work at five and then go work at a restaurant from like six to midnight. Like I was thinking of all these things, like what, what, what am I going to do to do, to get over this, to get past this? And I remember like thinking about all those things. I'm like, man, all of those things take me further away from what's most important, which is family. Like it's going to take me out of the house even more. It's going to make me see Gabby even less than I already do. And so that more, that, that day is the day that I signed up as a coach. And I'll show my age with Beachbody right here. I faxed in an application from my fax machine in my office that morning. And I, be I officially became a coach on April 11th, 2011. And I became a coach on April 11th, 2011 because my knowing how to provide for my family became greater than my fear of failing as a, at a, co as a coach. Because those eight months that I was saying no, I was really just living in fear. Like, I don't have enough time to build a business. I don't have enough energy to build a business. I don't have enough, um, I don't know how to use social media the right way. I don't look like Lindsay Matway. Like I had all these excuses and all of these fears. So that's the day that I signed up as a coach. And I remember having a phone call, my getting started right call with Lindsay. And one thing I want you guys to know about me is I'm a self starter. Like I, I think a lot of times people ask like, what are the people that are seeing success uh, really doing? And I was her self -start starter. When I got started, Lindsay Matway was on a vacation that she earned for being the top number three, like success club point earner for the month. And she was in Cabo. 
So I remember she like messaged me and she's like, Here, here's Katie Hefner's uh, Facebook. She's one of my best coaches. If you have any questions, you can ask her. And I got started and I, I hit Emerald and had like Success Club 6 by the time that my coach got back, Lindsay got back. And I got on a phone call with her and I remember telling her, Lindsay, I need to make $10,000 as a coach. And she said, Scotty, I can't promise you $10,000, but I promise that your income will be a direct reflection of the number of lives that you change. So I made a decision that I would change as many lives as I possibly could with these programs at that moment. And so I guess that, Brigitte, is so people can really know how I got started. That's the way that I got started as a coach. And I made that commitment that I would help as many people as possible. And I remember asking Lindsay, like, okay, $10,000, but I'm a numbers person. So I'm like, Lindsay, how many, how many people equals earning $10,000? And she's like, I can't give you that number exactly, but, but I'm pretty sure that if you hit Success Club 10 every month, you will be able to uh, earn that $10,000. So that's where my journey began. And she also, because um, she just got off that trip, I was like, how do I go on a trip like that for free? And she said, and if you hit Success Club 10 every single month, you will get a free trip to Atlantis. So that became my, my goal and my vision and my big, like the life-changing thing for me. A lot of times I think people are like, I don't have a big why or a big vision, uh, but it doesn't have to be huge. My big why and vision was $10,000 in a year and a free trip that I could take my wife Gabby on for, for our work because I'd never earned a trip like that before we didn't go on an awesome honeymoon it kind of we had a great time but it, it sucked it wasn't like some amazing honeymoon we we're like walking through miami carrying our suitcases in like 100 degree weather because uh, we couldn't get to our hotel but that's a different story so like it meant a lot to me to earn an amazing trip with beach body and so i want to break that down into there's a, a goal and there's a why or a reason behind it and the goal was ten thousand dollars and the goal was also success club 10 and the why behind that is, the, the strong, powerful why behind that is $10,000 meant that my wife wouldn't have to work the night shift at the Hilton Garden Inn because she made like $12,000 a year and we spent about $2,000 in babysitter costs for the time when we were, our shifts were separate. So that meant a lot to me because, I, I like this, Brigitte, because you were asking these questions at our retreat recently, like why $10,000? Why is it important that this goes down? But the reason that that was important to me is because it meant that me, Gabby, and our three little girls could sit down and eat dinner together and we could go for walks in the evening and we could play sports out in the front yard together as a family because that's something that we hadn't done in our five years of marriage. We worked separate shifts when we were dating and we worked separate shifts when we were married. So uh, that $10,000 meant that that could change. And, and I never at that time believed like that this would be my full-time job for me. It wasn't even on my radar yet. It was just use my hard work ethic and love for these programs and products to bring my wife home from work. And that's where it all started for me. I love your story, Scotty. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't have internet either when you signed up, right? You had to go use your neighbor's no. computer and internet <laughs> to sign up yeah. you didn't at your house, right? <laughs> yeah, we didn't have internet at our house. We didn't have, we didn't have a smartphone. I had a little Nokia MP3 player phone that you slid a little SD card in the side. But that was kind of a blessing for me because I couldn't be distracted by Facebook or MySpace. I don't know. It was, it was an Instagram back then. But I couldn't be distracted by social media because I couldn't log in from a phone. All I could do from my phone was text people and call people and then listen to books. And I downloaded Think and Grow Rich, Millionaire Next Door, and The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, and also the 90 Days to Excellence Calls by Craig Holiday. And on my 12 hour shift, I just listened to those on repeat for the entire year. So, so let's talk yeah. about some of the things that you did to create momentum that were the most impactful things that you did as a brand new coach. And I kind of want to ask if one of those things could be how you did your messages and your invites. Cause you say you didn't want to be that salesy person, but clearly you had to have the conversations and talk to people to get success club six before you're, coach was even back home. So what were those most impactful yeah. things that you did as a new coach to get started? I think, and, and I, I don't think this is something I've ever talked about. So I love this question, Brigida. I remember that every single person that was inspired by my transformation or that asked questions about it, 
if they came into our staying fit family group, which was the support group that we had before I even became a coach, they came in, right? But once I became a coach, the same thing happened is I was, I would, I would have these conversations with people and we'll talk a little bit about those, what those conversations look like. <clears throat> but as I, when, when I would bring someone into my staying fit family group, they didn't buy a DVD set yet from me. Well, some did, but even if they didn't, they didn't buy Shakeology, they didn't buy anything. They were a part of my team. Like I would be like, I want to welcome Melissa to our incredible team here in staying fit family before they ever bought anything. So I think that also made people feel special that they were a part of something and they weren't, it wasn't like a transaction where they had to buy something to, to fit in. They were able to just come in and be a part of the team. So uh, on the other side of that, what did the conversations look like? The conversations were, I remember I didn't want to do scripts and I never, I, I've never really done scripts at all. So those conversations were like, it was, 100% with like using social media to add value to people from the very beginning. So I was reading the books and I just, I would teach the things that I was learning in my books. So I still do that even today. And it's, it's funny because I get people, coaches that'll be like, oh man, that you said exactly what I needed to hear today. And the funny thing about that is it's exactly what I needed to hear today as well. So what happened was I read my personal development that day and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's something I need to work on. Or that's so important in health and fitness or in your nutrition or in building a business. And then I take those thoughts from the book, combine them with my thoughts. And I write a post in hopes of, of doing that same thing for somebody else that that book did for me in that moment. So, so what I did is consistently doing that, in adding value to people by, by teaching and, and sharing my life experiences, what I've gone through, I would do that. Plus I would share accountability from my workout. So I was showing the progress that I was having with P90X and I wasn't, I wasn't shy about that showing like every 30 day, the progress that I was having. And so people that were already following me were, were seeing the progress. They were seeing this new Scotty, like share this, you know, value, which is nothing they ever saw before. So they got to see me change and grow through the consistency of my posting on social media. And when, even when I started, like I started with like most coaches do, I went back and added like all of the people that I knew from high school. I didn't even start conversations with them. People from college, people from my sports teams, and I would just send a friend request. I wouldn't even say hi. And that, that was because I was a little, still a little shy back then. But I would do it just in hopes that they would, they would just, like my thinking behind it was like, if I send them a friend request, let's say I send Mike a friend request and let's say we went to school together. Mike's going to be like, because this is how I think. Mike's going to be like, oh, I wonder what Scotty's been up to. And he's going to scroll through my news feed and see what's going on. And my way of thinking it was like, of building my business was, if they're inspired by what they see or they want to be a part of what that, they're going to reach out to me or they're going to engage with me or comment. And so all of my invites only came from when somebody engaged with my stuff or they asked a question or they sent me a private message. Um, but whenever, but I did take very proactive um, measures in if somebody, um, let's say Mike's like, Oh man, that, that's, those are some awesome results. Let's just say you said something like that. That's crazy or whatever. He comments, I would say like, thanks on that post, but I would send Mike a private message and I would just start a conversation. And I wasn't like, Mike, you want to do this with me? It was Mike, what have you been up to? I see you got a couple kids. How long have you been married? I just started conversations like that. And I think a lot of that training came from obviously reading the books, listening to those books over 60 times. Um, but a lot of it came from being a missionary for my church for 20 years. Like I didn't just knock on someone's door and say, Hey, you want to get baptized tomorrow? Like they trained us to like, try to make a connection with them and make them feel comfortable to let you into their home to where you can ask some questions, get to know them. And then you can share a message with them and invite. So a lot of that training was two years of training, uh, in working with people like that, sharing a message, inviting and following up with people. And as I, as I even think about that, I think back to my mission and like, I was creative in that area, doing that as well. And I, I want you guys to take note of this. I used my gifts and like, I wasn't the most 
spiritual kid growing up. And, and even today, I'm still not the best at that. Like, you could ask me about a scripture, what does this mean or that mean? And, and I can't just off the top of my head do it. Like, I have people in my ward when I'm at, sitting in Sunday school and they answer every question. I'm like, holy crap, like, how do you know all that stuff? Like, I'm still like that. So being a missionary, like, I wasn't that person like some people. But the way, but we had a very high rate success rate as I did as a missionary in, in helping people because I found creative ways to use my gifts and talents to make connections with the people that help them trust in me and let me into their house. And believe it or not, m many of the families that we baptized, I met their kids in the, they're called plazas in Venezuela. They're like, like a park. I would meet them in the park when they were out skateboarding and playing guitar. And I would say, we'd walk into the park and I would say, let me see that guitar. And I would play music on the guitar. And the kids would be like, oh my gosh, like that's so awesome. Or I would do a kickflip with the skateboard in my church shoes and my, like a shirt and tie. And they'd be like, what? And it just like opened their eyes because they thought we were just lived, that missionaries, the Mormon missionaries just like wore shirts and ties all day long. And that's all they did. So what would happen is those kids would go home and their parents would be like, where have you been? And they're like, we were at the plaza skateboarding. And they'd be like, we met these two men of God, however they would word it. And like, they talked to us and he did this and that. And then we would get invited into the house. They, the parents would want to know who these guys were that their kids were talking with. And so we would get invited into their house. So you see how that's like using your own gifts and talents to connect with people. So my conversations and my invites were kind of using that kind of intuition of just, and obviously the skill set I, I learned from knocking on doors, getting rejected, uh, and trying to find ways to make connections with people so I could get into their house. So I know that's a long answer to what seemed like oh. there was like three questions inside of that question. Did I miss something in that? No, like so good. I just wanted to kind Is of- Is there another part of that question that I missed? No, nope, I think you nailed okay. it. Um, um, I just wanted to point out to people that when you say like using your gifts and talents, I'm like, you are finding that thing that you have in common with someone, but taking right. the time to find out what's important to that person. And I think that that's such a key thing that many people are like, I need to hurry and get to the invite so I can cross it off my list and not like, instead of taking the time with making those connections. And I think I love, I wrote down taking notes here of showing interest in people who have shown interest in you. Like when you said, like if they've engaged in your post, you were like, let me message them and show interest in them, not send them the invite, but just of, hey, how are you doing? Um, another thing that I wrote down just to kind of share with people is creating a sense of team right away with free clients. And that's one thing I've observed from Scotty is he is constantly adding value. Um, when I got started in this business, Scotty was doing a free fit club and I remember him showing me his calendar and he's like, we have fit club this night and this night. And then these, all the other nights of the week, I've got a free shake and share. And he was like, we invite people over, we give them a shakeology so they can try it. And we invite them over and we do a workout. Like that's how you build a business. And he was just always like giving out free value. And if you look at his page, it was the same thing. Just so I think that's another key element is just adding so much value for people. Um, whether that's through your personal development saying, Hey, this is what I learned today. Um, or, you know, here, come do a free workout. Uh, the other key thing that you said, Scotty is being proof the product works. You know, Scotty was sharing his photos all the time, uh, sharing his before and after photos. Um, what attracted me to Scotty too, was that he was not just sharing his before and after photos, but other people's as well. So I was like, Oh, this doesn't just work for him. He's not this, you know, uh, anomaly, but it's multiple people. So I think all of that has really helped you create momentum as a new coach. Um, I'm going to ask you about your cold market. So someone on my team asked as far as what can we do to grow the business? If you're starting with a cold market, what are some of the daily tasks that they should be doing? Yeah. Growing your cold market. I think look at any other, like I try to study other business, like businesses outside of Beachbody, like how do they attract customers? And it all comes back to being creative as well and connecting with what other people need. So like when I'm attracting and connecting with a cold market, 
you have to think about like the whole past, I've been a coach for nine and a half years. So the whole past eight and a half, eight years is cold market work. Like almost everything aside from maybe someone new moving into the neighborhood or new moving into a, someone new moving into the, uh, our church or whatever it is. So my, the way that I work my cold market is it's all going to go back to your social media presence and adding value. So my cold market is somebody new finds my post, one of my posts or my Instagram stories. And there's lots of techniques that, that one could share about that. Like I, use, I tag Idaho Falls as a location every time uh, I'm in Idaho Falls. Like when I'm in St. George, George, I tag the location on my workouts. I tag it in everything that we're doing. I hashtag the location as well so that I can attract new people that might be searching that hashtag for that city or that, that hashtag. And then once they, let's say someone does watch that or, or see your story through um, a hashtag, let's say Idaho Falls is, is my hometown. And they watch that story, you've got to grab their attention somehow. And so like in the stories, they see that when they click from the story into your profile, you've got to have consistent value if you're going to keep them around or something that they want to engage with or to be a part of. And a lot of my stuff is just teaching life lessons. It's not necessarily like this is how to build a business or this is how to be healthy and fit. It's like, this is how to progress and be happy uh, and find happiness. So um, I'm trying to add value in those ways in my social media. And so the cold market comes through that funnel of people. They see that when they watch the stories, that's where I send them. I'll, I'll send a message to everybody that watches my story. And it's not an invite. It's just like, it would just say like, Hey, Kimberly, I just, I, I noticed that you were, you watched our stories for the past week. I just wanted to reach out and say hi. Some people are, are a little timid to say hi at first. Uh, I just want to know, okay, it's copy and paste. That's a copy and pasted thing that I did, but it's not an invite. It just says like, where are you from? And like, or, or it says, where, where are you from? And tell me a little about yourself. Just super simple like that. But the thing I want you guys to know is I send out about 10 of those every day, anywhere from eight to 10 of those every day. And that would be like the only script that I really have. And that is like that script, I'm gonna relate it to the missionary work again. That script is just like the knock on a door. Like it's just the knocking on the door that you would do as a missionary. What happens after is the door either gets opened or it doesn't get opened. And if it gets open, then that's where I just start the conversation. Maybe she's like, oh, I live in Arkansas. And I'll be like, oh, cool. Are you, are you originally from Arkansas? And like, I see that you have, and I'll try to look through their stuff. I see that you have three kids. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys love doing? And I'll just start getting to know somebody like that and, and talking with them. And I won't, I'll invite them, but it won't be for like, <sighs> sometimes it'll come like, a week after that initial conversation, but it's usually like for me, like two weeks in. And I'll just say like, oh, hey, by the way, I haven't mentioned this before to you before, but we're gonna start a new group on September 2nd. We're doing this muscle burns fat workout and it's 30 minutes, you do it from your home and we're gonna have a group of people doing it and we're gonna hold each other accountable. Is that something you would be interested in? And so it's like non beach body conversation for like an entire week and then if they ask me about it, they'll, sometimes they'll say like, oh, I see you do these workouts or I've seen these before after pictures, what's that? Uh, but a lot of times for me, it, it, they, it's not that. It's me saying like, hey, yeah, we're gonna do this. Just like I said before, we're gonna do this thing starting in a couple weeks. Is, that some, is it something you'd like to try out with us? And if they say no, I'm like, okay, awesome. Totally cool. If you ever change your mind in the future, just reach out to me. And I think where a lot of coaches miss the mark on this is they get, offended or hurt or um, maybe I'm not doing this right mentality and mindset when that happens and then that affects the rest of the invites because because now they're inviting with like man people are telling me no maybe I'm doing this wrong and you just start to have all this self-doubt and self-doubt and negative self-talk will never bring a positive result does that make sense and that's kind of a it's kind of a deep subject to get into but uh, in those invites, you truly have to be in the place of like, if this person never wants to do something with me, I am 100% cool with that. Like, that's totally awesome. And I'm, I'm going to go find the people that do want to do it, or that do want the help and support 
and I'm going to do whatever it takes to find them. I love that. So, I mean, to me, hearing you speak, I'm like, it's literally the exact same as when you got started. Like, it's adding value, reaching out to the people who have engaged. And I think that requires people paying attention, you know, paying attention to who's clicking like on your post, who's watching your stories and having a human conversation with them, not a beach body robot conversation with them. Um, I'm going to add something that I think you do really well that you didn't mention, but um, if you follow Scotty's page, one of the things that he has done very consistently over, over the last nine years is he shows that the business works and he also shows that the products work. And um, I mean, that's just been on my mind a lot lately that, you know, if you're wanting to build a business, you have to show like, you know, we have two parts. We, we help people have their own business. We mentor coaches, right? And we also help people lose weight. And Scotty is so good at making it very obvious that there are people on his team having success and that this business works, not just for him, but for other people. And he is really good at showing that the products work, not just for him, but for other people. And he has done that so consistently over the last nine years that, um, you know, if someone's showing interest in you and you can see that they have a business opportunity that works and they have a product that works, I think it's going to be really natural for the cold market to become more. So, um, anyways, just to add that in there for you. Can I share something real quick along those lines? Yeah. Because I, I know Brigitte in this is saying Scotty has been really consistent in this, but I want you guys to know that just like anybody else, I've, I've done this in um, the way that I post in my belief at different times. And I had a time when um, I call it with Gabby, I call it the dark ages of my beach body journey where it's like, it seemed like things weren't working and clicking like they had before. Like I had coaches that left to do other network marketing businesses. I had coaches that I mentored that went on to build their own businesses outside of network marketing with their skill sets. And what happened was my mindset shifted of like, man, should I really invest in doing retreats and these long conversations and these friendships if that like the belief became if they're just going to leave me someday because and do something else and i had this um about a year and it's the first year we missed elite as a team uh, we'd hit it for five years in a row and then we missed it and then i was as as i was um working my business like i couldn't in my business, help my new coaches even get the one success club point for the elite category. And then that also bleeds into helping them get success club, hit success club, which is also another point category for elite. And like I was recruiting the coaches at least five a month for that entire year. And I had eight months where not one new coach in eight months hit success club. And I'm like, what the heck is going on with me? Like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> like, maybe my leadership, and I started to have all those doubts. Maybe my leadership isn't that great. And I was having a, a conversation with um, my corporate mentor at the time, Kayshawn Graves. And we were talking through this and I shared with her because this is all going to come through in like this mindset thing I'm going to share with you guys is going to come through whether you're new or old in this business and seeing results in your invites and helping people. And so I was telling her that and she's like, no, Scotty, you're a great leader. Look at the things that you've done. And so she gave me a little affirmation there. But that wasn't what helped me. She helped me shift my thinking. I was like, I was like, hey, Sean, every time, like, I look at my memories on Facebook or the time hop, like I see people in these group photos and they're no longer here. They're doing something else. And some of them like recruited other people to the other things. And like, I don't feel like it, maybe I'm just not investing time the right way, investing in my people because of that. And she's like, why don't you just shift the way you see it? Like the, when you see that picture, instead of thinking, maybe I like, instead of investing all this time and someone's just going to leave me belief. What if you just look at that person and say like, because of, I'll just make up a name because of Jennifer and the work that we did together for three years, we were able to help hundreds of people lose weight. And it also helped me pay off our mortgage. Like, I'm so grateful for that time that I spent with Jennifer. Uh, I didn't have a Jennifer <laughs> that left like that, but I'm just giving an example. And 
it's like these kind of shifts can happen like that. That conversation was in November of, of 2019. And in December, which would someone say was the busiest and hardest month, I recruited eight coaches, very similar to what I had recruited before. And five of them hit success club. I had eight months without one hitting success club. I didn't train them differently. I didn't do anything differently other than shift that belief inside of me of the energy that I was putting into my coaches and what I was doing as a coach to help people. So I want you to guys really pay attention to that. The way that your beliefs will dictate the result of your actions. hundred percent. I really love that. And then, Brigitte, going off of what you just shared about being consistent and sharing other people's things. It's funny you said that because that's the second thing Kayshawn told me to do. She looked through my social media and she said, I see that you are proof of the products. I see that you have this success and you spend all this time with your family. She's like, you need to show other people, you need to consistently show other people's success. This was attracting coaches to the business um, because that's what we were working on, attracting working coaches that would hit success club and start building their business. So you need to show other people on the team and their coaching success so that people see that it's not just you that's this anomaly or however you worded that. Um, so those are the two huge shifts that changed everything. You know, like you've never uh, shared that with me as far as like how you felt during the dark ages, as you put it. And it's so interesting because I had that exact same struggle and belief as far as seeing um, some people that I had invested in and either felt hurt by them or <laughs> that they left, you know, and yeah. Um, I had a similar like thing said to me as far as that we both got something out of it during our time together. And so it was, it was worth it and it was good. And, um, you know, I can just look back with gratitude and realize that not everybody's meant to be here forever, but during the time that we were working together, um, you know, I got something out of that relationship and so did they. So it was still worth that investment into them but um that kind of plays into the next question that i have for you um probably do this and then maybe one more but i'm curious what do you do to feed belief because i think belief is so crucial and i can see that that's the thing that made the difference for you to get started and to really hustle and make sacrifices at the beginning what are you doing to feed belief and how do you keep that strong I'm going to share two different examples. The first, the first is the putting those four audios on my MP3 player <laughs> cell phone. And I listened to 12 hours of personal development every single day. Back then I listened to all the, I downloaded the national wake up calls because I couldn't call in live from my work and they only had call in. They didn't have like Facebook live. I would download the MP3 from the coach online office and put it onto my phone or onto my computer so that I could listen to it at work. And it's so funny to think back on that because I remember sitting at work one time and, being, and hearing about this promotion. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is so exciting. And then I realized that I was listening to a wake up call from a year before I started. Like I went back and listened to national wake up calls from before I even started to see what these top coaches were doing even before I started. So I fed my belief with those books, Millionaire Next Door, Think and Grow Rich, The Slight Edge, Craig Holiday's 90 Days of Excellence, and then listen to every single national wake-up call. Those, I just, they became so ingrained in me that I knew that if I had the right mindset and took the right action, that I would have a positive result. And I knew that if I did it consistently over time, that would compound to massive uh, results in my life. And so I was willing uh, to do that, to invest in the personal development. And Though, man, the first four years, I think it was the first four years, I don't do as many a year now, but I listened to 52 books a year was my goal. So one book a week, I would listen to audio and, and it might sound a little like, oh, that's so much, like that's imp impossible for me to do. But it's, no, it's kind of funny. I listened to a two hour and 43 minute John C. Maxwell book today while I was out at the pool with the kids from like 2.30 to five o'clock. I had my my headphones on and I listened to an entire John C. Maxwell book today. So if you're, if you're thinking like, I don't have time to read that many books or do that much personal development, trust me, that will make all the difference in the world because it's going to change your mindset. 
one of the things that I struggled with um, recently in the last couple of years is I fell away from watching the national wake up calls live. And then what I would watch the playback. And then what happens when you start falling out of a habit, and then I would like, it would get to Wednesday and I hadn't watched it yet. And I was like, oh, I'll just get next week's national wake up call. And so I fell away from watching those. It wasn't too long. It was just like three or four months. That seems like a long time. It is, is a long time to not be listening to them. But I, rem I remembered that when I listen to the national wake up calls, I, I think I might look at them a lot different than, than some of you guys are thinking. There's, there's two things that they really fed my belief. Number one, listening to the person and their story fed my belief that if they can do it, I can do it too. The second thing was listening to all of the, this, this one almost does more for me than the actual teaching of the, the speaker. Listening to the, uh, not the announcements, but the rank advancements. I listened to those rank advancements and I was like, like if you listen right now, like 170 diamonds, if I was a brand new coach or an emerald out and seeing 170 diamonds and you're seeing that every week, I'd be like 170, like I could totally do that. So that fed my belief, not even the training in the National Wake Up Call, just the fact that so many people are doing it, that fed my belief that it was possible for me as well. So those are the two main ways, still listening to personal development and applying it. And then number two, like when I hear the new 15 star diamonds or the new five star diamonds, it feeds a belief both for me that I could advance my business. I hear like Micah Folsom with like eight business centers or however many she's at now. I'm like, okay, I can definitely open a fourth and a fifth right where before it's like my mind, just is a small thing, but my mindset was like, man, it's a little overwhelming with three business centers and Gabby's business center. Like, and then you have these little beliefs that come in. Like, do I really want to build a fourth and a fifth? Like it's already kind of challenging to, to manage and take care of all of these that I have. And then I see Micah with like seven or eight and I'm like, okay, she could do it. I could definitely, open up a fourth and a fifth and be able to take care of it. So those are all small things that feed your belief. Just seeing other listening to and seeing other people do it. Uh, that's, those are the ways I feed my belief the most. Okay. I love that. Um, I was talking with a few coaches recently about the national wake up call. And I think sometimes it's easy to look at that and be like, Oh, look at all of these people advancing and what's wrong with me. But there's a shift of being like, why not me? Like I can do that too. It's proof that it can be done versus like, Oh, something's wrong with me. It's, it's a different thought after you see that. So I think that's really great. Um, last, uh, last question for you, but what is your best advice to give someone who's been stuck at a rank for a while? My best advice to get someone that's stuck at a rank for a while I'm going to be vulnerable on this one. I've been stuck at a rank for a minute, for a long time. Because we hit 14 Star Diamond as a team. I was pushing with Barbie Kalev when she went to Super Star Diamond with her team. And we got to 14 Star Diamond. We were like two coaches short with one of my diamonds, and we missed it. And then that has slowly gone down to we are an eight Star Diamond team right now. So I have this goal, obviously, to be and lead a Super Star Diamond team. So to make that happen, we have to advance. And to be honest with you, I've, I've really had that on my mind for the past year and a half. But the, the place where I was really struggling with it is making the leap. My business was like seven star, eight star, six star, seven, just back and forth, depending on where people were at in their rank. But in my head, I'm like, we're going to be a, a superstar diamond team. And the, the problem for me that, that I'm working through and I'm seeing progress with now is making that leap seem so far from seven back up to 15 star diamond. I would look at my coach online office who has how many coaches on this leg and that leg, how many people that do have that are actually showing up and working right now. And I would look at those numbers and be like, they're just not there. And then it would be a little bit defeating. I'd be like, it's not possible right now. That was the mindset I was in. Like, I just can't do it. And then it was only about four or five months ago. I was like, we're really going to do it. So making like a concrete decision, like, like we're, we're going to do it. Like I have the skills, I have the ability, we have the people on the team. I have the ability to attract the people on the team. If we more people on the team, if we need it. 
And then what I did, and it was as simple as a conversation. I came out of my office. I was like to Gabby, I was like, you know how I, how I want to take this team to 15 star diamond. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to take the team to 10 star diamond first. Like we're going to build to a, a solid 10 star diamond team. And that seems very achievable. Like we can go from seven star, or eight star, we're eight star. Now we were, we're at the time we were six when I made that decision. I was like, we can easily, I can, we can go to 10 star diamond. Like I can see that happening and I can see that happening in the next six months. And so the first step for me and my advice to you is once I, I made that decision, here's the crazy thing. I had coaches on my team that I attracted during this time as well that came out of the gate just crushing it. And it's not some way that I trained them. I didn't change the training systems or anything. It was just having that decision of this is the team that we're going to build and this is how we're going to do it. And like I have two coaches that are both, um, once three months in, she's hit like SC20 all three months and almost has all the coaches she need. Like she came out of nowhere, not out of nowhere. She's a former coach from 2011 that came back into our team that we signed back up. And the second one was another marketing thing, but we have the Paradise at Village where we went on our retreat. I specifically try to shout out other companies and all of that stuff when I visit somewhere or locations. And I was giving a shout out how, how incredible that community was, but obviously it's showing me, my family, that I have great fitness results. And somebody that was visiting there at that time was looking at hashtags of the place they were watching or staying at. And she's like, oh my gosh, I saw those guys at the pool. And she's like, they're a mixed family, like we're a mixed family. And she's like, I've, I'm following, this is her conversation that she told me about in her head. I've been following like 10 Beachbody coaches on Instagram for the past seven years. And like just seeing us in person, she's like, okay, like this is like a real thing, I could do it. And she reached out to me and she's, she's recruited six coaches in her first two months and, and hit success club both months. Guys, that all happened after that shift of like, this is what we're going to go do. And so, um, so those are a couple of the things, setting the smaller goal. So if you're like at Emerald and you want to get to Diamond, think about like going to Emerald twice. Like just think about, okay, in the next month, I want to sign two new coaches, right? Instead of saying, I need to go from to my coach status of Emerald to Diamond in next 60 days, like break it down and say, okay, in the next four weeks, I want to sign two coaches and help. I want to sign three coaches. One of them sign their first coach, like set small goals that seem more achievable and that you can break down. And I've seen that all the time. And this makes me think, Brigitte, back to, it's, it's funny how you lose things. You know things, sometimes you apply them and then you lose them or you forget about them until you're, until you're reminded um, when, when we built a top 10 team in 2013, we ended up at number four in the company. There was like no way that I had the skill and ability, like in my mind to be able to do that. But we made that decision and we, t I, we talked about it like on my YouTube videos, the blog, like my blog posts were like how to be a top 10 team, even though we're like not top 10 yet, we're just working towards it. My Facebook posts were talking about how we're going to be a top 10 team. I remember one time going on a four-wheeler ATV ride with some of my local coaches. And I was like, guys, we got to stop. We're at the top of the mountain. Like, I got to make a video. And I got out of the video and the guys were with me. And I was like, like talking about the journey up to the top and how it related to our team and the journey that we were on to achieve top 10 and how great it was going to be to be at the end of the year and be celebrated for that. And like, I visualize that every single day. So I'm sharing that because as you're thinking about going from diamond to one star diamond or emerald to ruby or emerald to diamond, like you first have to make that decision and truly believe that it's possible for you and have like absolute conviction that you're going to do whatever it takes to, to make that happen. And the craziest thing happens is God sent me all of these incredible coaches that were attracted to that energy and that vision that would just come in and just start working. And because of the work of those people that I attracted in, and obviously the work that I put in with it, we were able to, to do it and, and end at number four. And so that's the same thing that I have to apply that I forgot about becoming a superstar diamond team. Cause see what my mindset was like, 
okay, we're going to be a superstar team. But as I looked at the numbers, that all the right people or their actions weren't there yet. So I was like, oh, maybe not yet. Maybe it's not possible right now. So all that I have to shift and that maybe you have to shift in your thinking right now is like, okay, we're going to make it happen no matter what. And God will bring the right people into my life or help ignite or help me know how to ignite the passion and the work ethic back into their goals and their vision again. Okay. That would be my advice. I love it. Well, and so I love the cutting it short and looking at the next measurable goal and not like the overarching big thing. I also just think the fact of not getting wrapped up in the how it's going to happen, but though, like, this is the vision, you know, this is what I want because you didn't do that when you were going for a top 10, you know, it wasn't like, I need to see the clear path. There's no way that's going to happen. It was just trusting that it will happen and visualizing that daily. I think that's really, really powerful. Um, I think too, that the shift that you made back in November applies to this too. You know, that like be willing to look at your beliefs and identify what it is that's holding you back and being willing to be wrong about that and asking for feedback and then applying the changes that you like applying and making the changes when you have asked for that feedback, I've had sometimes someone will ask for, for feedback and then nothing changes, you know? And it's like, they wanted to hold on to the, the belief that they couldn't do it, you know, but you were willing to say, okay, I, you know, I can, I can make an adjustment there. But um, my husband always reminds me that many times in these businesses, it's like steering a cruise ship, you know, and you can make the changes and you can do the thing. And it takes time for you to see the differences of steering that crew, the wheel on the cruise ship and actually see the direction change. Um, so I think it's, there is an element of just trusting, you know, and staying consistent with the belief and staying consistent with the action, knowing that the results will be there um, at the end of the day. But all right, you guys, thank you all for being on. Scotty, thank you so much for sharing. I love your energy. I love um, your story and I'm so grateful for you and I'm so grateful for your example and I can feel myself getting choked up so I'm gonna just end it but uh, <laughs> before I get emotional but I just am really really grateful for you and for your example and belief and vision um, and how that's influenced me and everyone on this call tonight so thank you so much for your time thank you everyone for being on here I will post the recording and have that up tonight thank you all awesome